But what about the roads? It is perplexing just how often this particular question comes up when one begins advocating for a truly free society. Well, if not for government, we couldn't have roads or we couldn't have police or nobody would care for the poor or we couldn't we wouldn't be protected, whether it's from from local thugs or from from foreign invaders. We wouldn't have this. We wouldn't have that. So thank goodness we have government and taxes because we wouldn't have any of those things. Uh, the idea that you just put out, oh yeah, well, what, what about the roads? Of course, uh, the first question everyone hears is when they start questioning some of these systems of control and, oh, well, we need government to go bomb people on the other side of the planet because what would we do without them? How would we build the roads? It's not only perplexing because it's easy enough to answer this question, but the very frequency with which this question, this objection to a free society is raised, is perplexing in and of itself. It's almost as if somehow in that 15,000 hours of government-enforced uh, indoctrination that we go through in the public school system in our youth, we are drilled into, we have drilled into us from a very early age the idea that of course you can't have something such as a road system that actually functions without having a centralized gang of thugs wearing hats and shiny badges proclaiming to be something called the government with a monopoly on the initiation of force within a geographical area that points a gun at people heads in order to take money from them in order to fund the military industrial complex and other things that they don't want in the name of democracy or whatever the prevailing mythology of the day is. It is bizarre just how frequently this particular question comes up. And in the late 18th and um, practically the whole of the 19th century, the dominant ideology in the United States was one not of laissez-faire but of something verging on it. That is to say, most people thought that government ought to have a very limited role. They weren't anarchists. Their anarchists were practically unknown in this country or any other, so far as I'm aware, but, uh, but a great many people did believe that government shouldn't get involved uh, in a whole host of things that ultimately government did get involved in. Uh, they would say, it's not the proper business of government to do X, to do Y. Uh, now, in fact, they became more like that after the 1840s, because before that there had been a lot of government involvement in economic activity at the state level, uh, and the local level for that matter, uh, holdovers from the old kind of regulations that, that the English had brought down from the Middle Ages, you know, when they mercantilists were telling people how many threads they could have in a, in a yard of woolen cloth and nonsense like that. Or in the colonial times, the, the local town government would tell you when you could have a market day and when you couldn't have a market day and how heavy a loaf of bread had to be if you sold it at the public market. And so those kinds of things went back for centuries and local governments inherited some of them when the English came and colonized North America but they were very ill-enforced. My old friend Jonathan Hughes wrote a, book, wrote a book about colonial economic controls, and, uh, and he had gone through all the legal documents of the colonial period, and he had said, oh, look, it, this was a massive regulation in the colonial times. Uh, look at all the things they were controlling. What Jonathan didn't adequately take into account was the fact that hardly any of that was enforced. <laughs> Because there wasn't anybody to enforce it. Who was going to do it? The mayor? <laughs> Not bloody likely if he wanted to be reelected. Uh, all the merchants would vote against him and probably almost all the people too. And <clears throat> nearly everybody lived out in the country or in a very small village uh, well into the 19th century. So there wasn't anybody around to see what they were doing. They did what they wanted to do. Uh, you know, it's not that they committed murder freely. People would get up in arms about that. But, you know, if they wanted to sell a half, half size loaf of bread, nobody was going to bother them for doing it, no matter what the legislation said in the state capitol or in the, the records of the city government. Okay? So you had those kinds of things that were petering out in the 19th century. And then you had these states involved in a lot of improvements like canals, uh, a little bit of road building. Most of the roads are actually privately built, you know. Take note, all you critics of anarchists, most of the roads were privately built. <laughs> so that answers the question, who will build the roads? Uh, 
businessmen will build the roads, as they did then. They built hundreds of turnpikes in uh, the northeastern part of the country mainly. 